Hello friends, today we are going to have a session on metal contaminants in food. I am Dr. Nilesh Amritkar and PhD uh, working in the field of analytical testing uh, since last 20 years. Metals. Uh, metal is a material which is hard, opaque, shiny and has a good electrical and thermal conductivity. Metals generally do not occur in free state and only metals like gold, mercury, platinum are occasionally found in free state. Other metals in nature are present in form of either oxides, carbonates, sulphides, etc. All metals if taken in excess amounts are always toxic. In the context of food and human diet, metals can be classified either as minerals, micronutrients or contaminants. What are minerals? Minerals are elements or chemical compounds that are normally crystalline and are formed as a result of geological processes. Minerals are required as essential nutrients by organisms to perform functions which are necessary for life. Minerals originate in the earth, in soil and cannot be made by any living organism. Therefore, most of the minerals that are part of human diet come from eating the plants or the animals or from the drinking water that is the groundwater. So plants and water or the animals get these minerals from soil. Essential minerals include sodium, potassium, calcium, magnesium and phosphorus. What are micronutrients? Micronutrients are the nutrients or the metals that are required at trace levels and therefore they are called as micronutrients. Apart from minerals, human body requires other metals in very small quantities like zinc, selenium, cobalt, iron, copper, manganese, molybdenum, iodine. For example, the daily value for minerals like calcium and phosphorus is in the range of 1000 mg. Whereas for micronutrients like iron or copper, the daily values can range from 18 mg to 2 mg respectively. How does a consumer select a food item that has the right amount of minerals and trace nutrients? What we can do is, we can check the nutritional label of the packaged food, look for the details about the minerals and, and or the daily values that the product is providing. Also check in whether the nutritional label makes any claims for fortification meaning addition of minerals or trace elements to the product for example fortified atta or iodized salt. Apart from minerals and trace elements there is a third class of metals which does not appear on the nutritional label and that is metal contaminants. What are these metal contaminants? They are undesirable metals in food like arsenic, mercury, lead, cadmium, and are harmful to the body. Therefore, should not be present above a certain level in the food products. In the FSSR, following metal contaminants have been addressed. Arsenic, cadmium, lead, tin, mercury and methyl mercury. Methyl mercury is the organic species of mercury and is more toxic than the inorganic mercury. Let us also have a look at the toxic effects on human beings. Arsenic can cause cancer, skin diseases, vascular and nervous system disorders. Lead can cause brain damage, paralysis, anemia, gastrointestinal systems and can cause damage to the kidneys, reproductive as well as the immune systems. Mercury, the organic form of methyl mercury is more toxic and also bioaccumulates in fatty tissues. It causes damage to the central nervous systems, the kidney and the organic form of mercury can cross the placental barrier between the mother and the unborn baby. Metals can occur as residues in food because of their presence in the environment and as a result of human activities such as farming, industry or car exhaust or from contamination during food processing and storage. For example, arsenic in air ranges from 20 to 100 nanogram per meter cube in cities whereas in soil it can be in the range of 1 to 40 ppm and sometimes even higher in arsenic rich areas. Cadmium is widely found in the earth at an average concentration of 0.1 mg per kg and accumulation of cadmium in sedimentary rocks and marine phosphates is about 15 mg per kg. So arsenic and cadmium can easily find their way into the food chain. Methyl mercury is formed from inorganic mercury by the action of microbes that live in the aquatic systems including lakes, rivers, wetlands, sediments, soils and the open ocean. And since methyl mercury is formed in the aquatic systems and because it is not readily eliminated from organisms, it gets biomagnified in aquatic food chains from bacteria to plankton and to the micro invertebrates to herbivorous fish and to fish eating fish. At each step in the food chain, the concentration of methyl mercury in the organism goes on increasing. In summary, 
people can be exposed to these metals from either the environment or through by ingesting contaminated food or water some examples of bioaccumulation or accumulation of metals in food includes arsenic in rice lead in carrot mercury and methyl mercury in fish and sheep products cadmium in cereals fruits vegetables meat tin in canned foods and nickel in hydrogenated fats few slides ahead will show us the mrls for these heavy metals uh, what we have tried to do over here is benchmark the mrl codex with respect to the mrl prescribed by fssr arsenic in milk is about 0.1 ppm in soft drinks about 0.5 ppm pulp and pulp products of any fruit is about 0.2 ppm cadmium on the other hand in fruiting vegetables it is as low as 0.05 ppm whereas in natural mineral mineral waters it is even lower at 0.003 ppm lead in pulses and cereal grains is around 0.2 ppm whereas if you look at fruit juices ready to drink the lead as per the codex is 0.03 ppm whereas as per fssr it is 0.05 ppm in fish it is 0.3 ppm whereas in case of milk lead allowed is about 0.02 ppm for mercury and methyl mercury again the standards have been prescribed by codex uh, for salt food grade it is about 0.1 ppm whereas for natural mineral waters is it is as low as 0.001 ppm zinc till now was considered as a heavy metal contaminant with a limit of around 50 ppm however it has been observed that many of the food products does contain zinc as naturally occurring heavy metal up to even 65 to 70 ppm for example in coca beans when this was reported to fssai fssai has positively come up with a new guideline and has omitted zinc as a heavy metal contaminant now we also need to look at the analytical methods for these detecting these heavy metals lead cadmium or mercury can be analyzed using as icp oes or icp ms however the important thing is sample preparation it can be either done by acid digestion open or closed method or ashing dry or wet ashing as explained earlier most of the elements do not occur in free form they are often present in oxide carbonate sulfides and other such forms in nature so detection techniques used for the metals can only analyze free form of metals and not their oxides or carbonates in addition to this metals may be attached to some organic part of the food matrix like methyl mercury present in fatty tissues acid used in the process of sample digestion helps to solubilize the metal in solution and release the metal from its different forms therefore making their detection easy for example nitric acid converts the elements to nitrate salts which are readily soluble in water and therefore can be detected very easily in the same way ashing at high temperature helps in burning of the organic matter and yields the metal in its free form sample preparation using acid digestion nitric acid is the most commonly used acid as apart from forming the soluble nitrate salts of metals it also act as an oxidizing agent it can be used along with a small quantity of hydrochloric acid and for samples containing very high organic matter an oxidizing agent like hydrogen peroxide or perchloric acid helps along with nitric acid acid digestion can be performed in two ways the conventional open digestion method and currently the most popular method is the closed digestion method let us have a look at these two methods in open digestion as the name suggests it is carried out in open without covering the digestion vessel however it has got some disadvantages like the oxidizing power of nitric acid is insufficient for some matrices at 122 degree centigrade which is the boiling point of nitric acid and therefore digestion may be may be incomplete for some matrices when these matrices are high in fat or protein it becomes even more difficult there could be possibility of contamination through air and also danger of losing some trace or volatile elements therefore closed digestion is preferred this closed digestion can be carried out using a microwave digester temperatures achieved in closed digestions range from 200 to 260 degree centigrade and leads to reaction kinetics and complete decomposition of the matrix however reaction vessels used for closed digestion have to have certain specific characteristics they need to be heat resistant they need to have high mechanical strength so that they don't explode they have to be resistant to acids they should be low re in reactivity and they should not cause contamination into the food matrix that is getting digested 
and that's the reason these digesting vessels are quite expensive. So an ideal sample preparation technique should be able to achieve complete solution of the elements, complete decomposition of the matrix, avoid losses and contamination of other heavy metals, reduction of handling and processing time and finally a high throughput system. The detection of these heavy metals can be done using high end instrumentation such as atomic absorption spectrometry AS or inductive coupled plasma ICP or inductive coupled plasma coupled with mass spectrometry that is ICP MS. The AS is the oldest technique available. A graphite furnace AS offers a very low detection limits which are not even possible by the new techniques such as the ICP. But there are disadvantages. Low throughput, then detection of refractory compounds like those of aluminum, vanadium is not correct. Non-metals like sulfur and phosphorus are not determined by AS and detection of group 1 elements like sodium, potassium possess lot of interferences. Whereas ICP OES relies on atomic emission spectroscopy, it has got number of advantages. It is a high throughput system wherein in one run you can analyze multiple elements. Detection of refractory compounds like aluminium, vanadium are possible because of the high temperature of the plasma. Even the non-metals like sulfur or phosphorus can be determined and most importantly it has a very high linear dynamic range. The ICP MS is a very costly system but it has got lot of advantages over ICP OES and actually it covers the advantages of graphite furnace and the disadvantages of ICP OES. By going to the range of detection range of 1 to 10 PPT, the advantage of ICP MS is overcome by the matrix effect generally encountered in AS and ICP. ICP MS can be further used for hyphenated analytical methods to detect organometallic compounds such as methyl mercury or organic and arsenic. There are certain challenges in these methods when we are using high end methods like ICP OES or ICP MS. We need to use high grade acids or what are called as supra pure acids which do not absolutely contain any metal impurities. Use of contaminant free vessels, cleaning and upkeep of microwave digester vessels and the glassware is very very important trained analyst, validated methods, a single method cannot be applied directly to all type of food matrices as there is lot of matrix interferences and maintenance of ICP OES and ICP MS is very very critical because cleaning of torch nebulizer is a daily activity and essential for smooth functioning of these instruments. Some of the recent notifications of FSSAI dated 3rd May 2016, they have defined the MRLs of metal contaminants and have in fact amended it or made it more stricter. They have included some new categories or they have decreased the MRLs. For example, edible oils and fats earlier had an MRL of 0.5 ppm for lead and it has now been changed to 0.1 ppm. MRL for cadmium in bulk vegetables has been newly introduced and is at 0.05 milligram per kg and to achieve these lower MRLs is a challenge. Of course, this can be achieved using ICP OES and ICP MS. This challenge can be handled using better sample preparation methods and more sensitive instruments. More sensitive instruments like the ICP OES and ICP MS and better sample preparation techniques like use of microwave digesters. Lower levels of detection can be achieved using ICP OES up to 0.05 ppm and for ICP MS up to 0.005 ppm. So friends, today in this session on metal contaminants, we have briefly touched on what are the different type of metal contaminants from minerals, micronutrients to contaminants, importance of these metals, their sources, their entry into food chain and biomagnification. We also discussed briefly on the maximum residue limits as per the codex and FSSR. We have seen in this session the various analytical techniques including sample preparation and detection methods and some of the challenges in the analysis. Finally, we have seen the recent notification by FSSI and going forward it is expected that the limits are going to be more and more stringent. Thank you.